Thanks. Um, just a quick check. If you can hear me in the back, uh, raise your hand. Can anyone hear me in the back? Great. All right. Um, let me ask uh, you guys, uh, how many of you have developed for more than one platform at once, be it Android, be it browser, be it something? All right, I see some hands. And you know that it's not that easy. And it's not that easy because it's getting even harder as we speak. So we have operating systems, we have mobile operating systems, we have uh, browsers that are becoming platforms on their own. I mean, the uh, Google uh, Chrome App Store is a platform right now. It's a great way to distribute your new games. And then we have uh, the distinctions between native and web and mobile and desktop. And I mean, fragmentation much. Fragmentation is becoming really crazy right now. And we as a company uh, grew because we appeal to everyone. So we have uh, websites with mass market appeal. And this means that if we are to go cross-platform, we have a serious issue with appealing to everyone, with delivering the right content to the right people, with easy access and providing a good user experience. So how fragmented is our audience on top of uh, all of the browser and uh, OS fragmentations? So for example, uh, we have a dedicated channel to small girls under uh, 15 years old. We have a teenage channel where we serve content for teenagers. And then we have a family channel where we serve content for everyone 8 to 80. And right now this is uh, mostly on web, but we are taking that into mobile. So what I want to share with you right now is uh, some stats uh, of why it is uh, a serious issue to bring that experience cross-platform. Here I just chose some uh, five random games and extracted audience data from it, uh, simply uh, to show who plays what and uh, why. Uh, first example is a game called Level Editors, a game. In the screenshot over there, you see that it's a uh, simple and creative platformer game where you basically build a level, hence level editor, and uh, get your character to the end of the screen. Uh, you would think that this will be played by uh, teenagers, but really the audience that plays it is 11 to 15 years old with mostly girls. What do you know? But kids under five come back most often to play this game, so they are the most loyal audience. Uh, a fair assumption here would be that uh, moms uh, just put their kids to play this game as an educational game. Then we have uh, Bubble Shure, a classic game, I don't need to describe it. Also 11 to 15, 80% female, with 50 plus audience coming back most often and generating the vast majority of gameplays. So here it's a game that appeals again to a lot of different audiences with a core group being over 50. Then we launched uh, fairly recently our first Stage 3D, aka Molehill, aka Flash Player 11 game, uh, which is a 3D racing game with uh, hardware acceleration, which makes it run in Flash, but in full 3D. So it's essentially a console experience in a way. Uh, it's played by 6 to 28 year olds, which is a very widespread of an audience, and uh, predominantly male. So over 90% are boys. And it is a true core experience, which means that compared to the previous games that I just showed, it will have to have a very different approach of going cross-platform, simply because the expectation is set very high on that specific game. We have Uphill Rush, which, uh, as you can see in the screenshot, is a side-scrolling racing game where you uh, do stunts. Uh, you would think it's a purely male teenage game, but really it's uh, spread across girls and boys 11 to 15 fairly equally. And all demographics of this game are loyal. They come back very often. But the distinctive factor of this audience over here is that boys come back more often to compete. So they uh, compete for uh, high scores in our leaderboards, in our social graphs. Have, uh, this is the final game, I promise, number data. Uh, snail Bob, uh, which is a physics puzzle game where you have to uh, help a snail named Bob get to wherever he's going. Uh, mostly played by kids under 10. 
which is surprising because I love the game and a lot of other people do. But here that gets evened out by the fact that everyone loves it, so the stickiness across uh, the people that do check it out is very high. However, initially it's checked out mostly by uh, kids under 10. But the most committed players, for whatever reason, are female 50 plus. This just gives you an idea of how spread the audience is. And uh, while we would love to focus on a single audience to go cross-platform, that is not in our DNA. We want to be everywhere. We want to appeal to everyone. And as mentioned in the previous presentation, it's uh, hard to succeed without focusing. But uh, I believe we have found a way, but it's still kind of crazy. So the way to do it is to not go just mobile, but go cross-platform. And this has been said today uh, many, many times. But what I mean by that is, uh, just to explain it, let's go back a little bit, a couple of years into uh, the pre-iPhone era. Uh, the era before the smartphone was a fully compatible browser came. Uh, you might want you might remember something like this. Uh, this is an actual picture of my phone that I fired up to uh, for this specific presentation, and I just remembered how horrible the user experience of that was. It, it, it just didn't work. You started typing, then, then it was slow. Uh, it was obviously a technology, a technology challenge, but still, the user experience was not great. So this was my reaction when making this picture. Then the iPhone came. And what happened with the iPhone is that uh, it, it was the first phone with a full uh, browser where it actually worked. It worked really well. You could enter a website, you could zoom in and consume all of the content on that page. But you would expect that from there, everyone would be happy. You have a small screen where you just zoom in and uh, check out the content, but it didn't work that well. As you can see in the screenshot when uh, I load the uh, standard website uh, of New York Pizza, it's just, it, it's, it's not that fantastic. And a lot of companies realized this and started making mobile versions of their websites, as pictured here. And what happened there was is a change in design philosophy in a way that, okay, I'm on this mobile website which serves me all of the relevant important content and focuses on it. It's very bold, very clean, and gets the job done, which is why the quote, mobile first, is very, very accurate here. And what happened was that this is no longer the standard look of a website, and this is no longer the mobile website. This is essentially a design philosophy that applies to cross-platform websites. It's a design philosophy from the core to build up a product, be it a game, be it a website to deliver a cross-platform experience from the get-go. Just focus on things that are relevant. If it's not used, don't show it. If it's bold, clean, and focuses only on the main thing, it will work on any device. So simplicity in design is key when you're working on a cross-platform experience, which is why some specific games will never work on tablets. And here is just a random screenshot of an MMO game. Good luck taking that uh, to a mobile device. Versus when you have something like uh, Cut the Rope, it's very easy, it's very simple to understand, yet if you have played this game thoroughly and tried to collect all of the stars, it will blow your mind on the creative aspect of using that simple mechanic and applying that to different uh, devices uh, and uh, creating levels that expand and blow people's minds in terms of creativity. This is simplicity in design, and it is cross-platform design. Perhaps unintentionally, but it is mobile-first design that goes cross-platform. Whenever you build something like that, you need to build it to work with different input methods. So for example, uh, you need to keep the core gameplay the same, however, take advantage of each and every input method and make small tweaks uh, to each of your products when they're accessible from different devices. So you detect which device it's being played on. It doesn't matter if it's a native app, if it's uh, deployed to a specific app store, or if it's running in HTML5. You need to have specific 
uh, you need to take specific advantages of a specific platform. And here is just a recent example which I loved uh, from a, a game called Kingdom Rush by Ironhide Studios. It's a tower defense game where I have to build a tower and on the web, when I play it in Flash, it's as easy as clicking over there. I just make one click and that's it, it's done. However, if I play it on uh, an iPad, uh, there is a problem where the touch is just kind of smudged. I don't see where my finger is pointing at. I don't see what I'm touching. And the solution is brilliantly simple. Double tap, that's it. These little tweaks will make your users appreciate the experience. They will appreciate the fact that you thought about their convenience. And as we all know, the consumer comes first. Also, make sure to be context sensitive. This is something that really thrived uh, after in the post iPhone era. Uh, here, um, what you do is if it's not relevant, you don't show it. That's it. You just focus on the bold and clean stuff. This example, it's a game called uh, Burrito Bison, with, uh, where you start. If you're stuck, if you don't know what to do, it shows that thing where. Uh, it highlights the fact that you need to press a button. But if you have already figured out that you have to press a button at that point, it will not show that to you. I mean, why? It's context sensitive, it's uh, visualizing, and it's just being relevant. Keep things relevant and context sensitive, and your users will appreciate the experience. Obviously, here, the technology is the biggest challenge. And the reason why I didn't want to focus my presentation on technology is because by, that, by this time it will have been outspoken. We have UNC, we have HTML5, we have different SDKs to develop for cross-platform. But what we found is that uh, we have different audiences with different expectations. So for us, it's very hard to find a one-size-fits-all solution. So what we did was is we uh, figured that HTML5 is a safer long-term bet in terms of browser-based gaming. So you have a single code that you deliver to different devices, which is HTML5. Uh, that right now is limited to somewhat simpler games, but it is accelerating very fast. In the meanwhile, for uh, audiences that like games uh, like the Flash 3D one I showed you, uh, that will not happen in HTML5 anytime soon. So for that specific one, we have to be native. And for that, we use Unity and Flash. Uh, and now Unity exports into Flash, so that makes it easier. And also go native from that same platform. So Unity right now is what we stick with for, for native and web. That said, the technologies are going to merge. You already see this with design philosophies. So what I believe will happen very shortly is that we will have websites and games and games on the web that will detect the device you're accessing it from and deliver it based on your device preferences. So it will adjust to your screen size, it will have the same design philosophy that works with multiple input methods and it will be a true cross-platform experience. Here is something that I wanted to share with you on exactly that. Let's see if this actually loads. Come on. Okay, it's loaded. Uh, right now I'm accessing a web page live, you can actually uh, go to bit.ly uh, slash fangthfun. This is a game running in HTML5. And if you access that URL from your mobile browser, you will get the same experience. If you try it out on your iPhone right now, you will get the same game running at the same frame rate and being an actual cross-platform experience. And we're going to publish this same game on the web and on the mobile as well. And depending on, okay, I won, victory. Depending on the device that you're at, it will adapt and scale properly. So the textures will uh, inflate and deflate based on your screen resolution. And as you can see, this goes uh, already far beyond what was seen 
before in terms of there is physics, there is animation, there are some sounds coming in. And this is where it's really going, a single URL, a single destination where you access it, doesn't matter from which device. There is no definition of mobile and non-mobile. There is just different input methods. And this is really where it's going. Okay, I did not win this level. Uh -huh. Okay, so there is some scaling issues right now uh, because, okay, I lost this level. So anyway, this is where it's going in terms of technology. And what I wanted to conclude with is a uh, video of a IP that we own that uh, we did bring it as a native app, but I still want to share it with you because uh, we, as, as soon as the technology is going to be there, we will bring it to true cross-platform. I'm sorry that I have to copy this. Uh, it's because uh, my embedded video did not want to work. So I'm just going to link to YouTube. Questions? <laughs> we also have some incentives uh, to ask questions. There are a couple of uh, spill footballs, also branding. Uh, and if you ask one, uh, we're just going to throw them at you. Um. How open are you for the uh, third-party content? Uh, how open? I mean, do you accept to publish other content, like on a ref share basis, for instance? Uh, the way we publish content usually is we either develop it in-house or we work on a licensing model. Uh, usually, we uh, license a game to use it on our websites and to have that game uh, branded in distribution to other websites. That's uh, if we talk about Flash games. Uh, for HTML5 games right now, it's usually uh, in-house development or licensing of that content. But uh, for revenue share, we work uh, mostly with social games. Any other questions? Does anyone want football? There are two more. Right, I think that's a wrap. <laughs>